Buzzing with Miss B. So how do you figure out where to start as an instructional coach? Well, the first thing you need to do is to get to know the practice of the teachers that are on your campus. And there are a few ways that you can do this. Um, one thing that you can do is use a survey. And there's actually a survey in your free download um, if you enter your email address. So option one is a survey, and it actually has the different components of Reader's Workshop. And then you're asking people for feedback about um, how they roll those practices out in their classroom and a few notes that might give you some uh, clues about what direction they're heading in. This is really good information because it'll tell you how teachers feel about the work that they're doing. Um, it can give you a starting point for individual teachers and whenever you coach these teachers, you know what kinds of goals you may be working towards. Uh, you could do this on paper or you could also do a survey monkey uh, survey, which is free up to, I think, 100, 100 responses. So you'll probably be covered if, if you use a survey monkey survey. The other option is a classroom sweep. Now, this is um, an approach where you visit every single classroom on your campus, or you can do by grade levels if that's overwhelming, and you take notes about what you see. So the purpose of this is to gather information about what practices are in place on your campus and what is the effect on students. So let's say that um, one day I'm going to visit campuses, classrooms on my campus. I take my classroom sweep document. I have one for each grade level. Again, this is in your freebie. And I record the teacher names down the side. And then I just record notes about what I see happening. I want to spend probably around 15 to 20 minutes in each classroom, if that is possible. I know that's a long time whenever you're visiting a lot of classrooms. So you may not be able to do that. But you want to really see what's going on. Um, <clears throat> you want to observe the walls. You want to see what the teacher is doing. And you want to see what students are doing. How are they speaking about their learning? What practices are in place? What literature do you see? Is it authentic? Um, from there, after you record all of your notes, you can lay out all of your notes across your table, and you want to notice patterns. And so here are a few things that you can look for uh, when you're looking across your classroom sweep data. You can notice, are the Reader's Workshop framework components in place? Um, are teachers doing guided reading at all? Are teachers doing read aloud? Is that happening? You can look across and see what content is being taught. Are grade levels aligned? Are they in line with their curriculum? Or does everybody do their own thing? You might notice what instructional materials are being used or what instructional practices are being used. If you're seeing lots of worksheets, that's a sign of an area you might want to grow. If you're seeing um, lots of uh, teacher-directed learning and very little student involvement, then that might be an area that you want to grow. And you also want to notice how students are demonstrating their learning. Are students asked to read? Are they asked to speak? Are they asked to write um, and reflect on their learning? Or is it multiple choice? How do students demonstrate that they have learned something? How do they apply it as well? So let's talk about the sample here that I have on the screen. You've got um, uh, five teachers down the side in second grade. And then there are some notes about each teacher that you can kind of use to get a picture of what's going on in those classrooms. If you look down the notes, you may notice a couple things. Um, teachers seem to be in different places in their curriculum. Everybody's kind of teaching their own content. Um, <coughs> Some teachers have literacy stations going on. Some of those stations are primarily worksheets. There are worksheets primarily in a few classrooms. Worksheet is not a bad word. How do you use worksheets is really the question that we want to ask. Um, we see anchor charts happening in some classrooms, maybe longer mini lessons, shorter mini lessons in some places. I only saw independent reading in one or two rooms, and it was for a very short period of time. So some things that we want to think about are maybe what is a mini lesson? Um, what grade level standards are we asked to teach at certain times in the year? And um, how are we asking kids to respond to those? Are they doing handouts and just turning them in? Are they applying that learning into their own independent reading? Um, what does that practice look like? And you also may notice some teachers who have real strengths that you want to share with, your grade, with that grade level. So you could say, for example, you have Ms. Chambers, whose classroom library is being used by their students. So maybe you can invite, with Ms. Chambers' permission, other teachers to see that classroom library and ask her to explain a little bit about how she has gotten it to be a useful tool for her students. So this is going to serve as um, next steps for, for you as a coach and also um, ways to kind of get teachers to start collaborating and sharing their strengths.